Hello folks, Jonathan Milam here. I hope you're having a great day. I've got four horns here that play so dark it could affect your computer. If you feel like the brightness is, you might need to crank up the brightness a little more as I play because the darkness of these horns, it could, well, it's not likely, but it's possible, I suppose. I've got a um, Mount Vernon Bach here. Um, it's got a 3 8 inch shorter lead pipe and a lot of questions, some people feel that uh, Vincent Bach was trying to uh, rival some of the trumpets in uh, Europe for intonation. But uh, one man said no. He said the uh, Mount Vernon box were playing so much darker than the New York box, the previous uh, batch and location, that um, the lead pipe was shortened to try and give them a brighter sound. Not really sure, but this is a dark sounding, beautiful horn from about 1958, a lot of original lacquer on here. And uh, it does tend to play dark. So um, we're gonna exacerbate that. First of all, I'm gonna use two mouthpieces with these horns. The first one is a TATF, very deep V. Then we'll go to a medium shallow mouthpiece by GR, and we'll play the same horns in the same order. Gonna start off with the Mount Vernon Bach from 58. It's a 25 lead pipe, 37 bell. Then we're gonna play a Thane Standard Professional. Then we're gonna play a P. Moriot that has a uh, titanium copper bell. And last, I didn't picture it, but we're going to play an Edwards Gen 2. All pretty dark sounding horns and uh, we'll let you see which one you like the best. Gonna start off with the old American uh, uh, summertime, again with uh, Trent Austin's TATF flugel type mouthpiece. For those of you that like dark box, it's a dark box. Okay, next wonderful horn, rather large bell, 72 style. I think it's a little bigger than the 72 bell that I've got, but definitely in that range. Logan Thane's standard professional model. Wonderful horn, very light. The uh, Mount Vernon Bach is heavy. It's uh, quite a bit heavier than an Elkhart Bach that I've got. Okay, another magnificent horn. This is a P. Mori out there, more known for their saxes. Don't know if you can tell, but uh, here we've got a brass work, and then the bell of this is a titanium copper, so it's kind of a, looks like rose gold, actually popular watch color and so on. Okay, same thing. We're going to play the P. Moriart. It's a uh, 75 and I forget what the uh, uh, lettering for the uh, lead pipe and uh, which is also the uh, titanium copper. We'll note that in the comments. In fact, if you go down to the comments and you hit the more so that you can see the whole thing, you'll see each of these mouthpieces in a separate box at the bottom of the comments. Also a shout out to our friends at Syntex Brass. 
I bought from them uh, some over the years. They bought a little bit from me. Wonderful people to deal with. If you're looking for a used horn, definitely check them out. There'll also be the link for that. If I've got any horns for sale, it'll be linked in the comments section as well. Now for the P. Moriop with that same TATF mouthpiece. Gotta say, this is a very easy bell to fill. A little bit smaller than uh, the Thane, which is a little more than five inches, and I'm pretty sure this is about four and seven eighths. You can see them. I think I've got them about the same angle there. The throat is going to be similar, but I believe this is a bit more of a 37 type. Definitely a easier thing to fill. Then you top large. We've got a wonderful playing. Edwards Gen 2 here, the biggest bell they made, and um, this is a heavier one, although it is a brass bell. Great Gen 2. Not sure how uh, Getson and Edwards exactly have their affiliation, but uh, wonderful, wonderful horn. Outstanding valve feel. It's funny, but uh, I'm home for an extended stay, uh, vacation month, and um, I wind up practicing less at home than I do when I'm on the road. When I'm in a hotel, flight attendant, I've got a lot of time to practice and uh, nothing for me to be able to put in an hour and a half, two hours a day. Then you come home and uh, kind of get the look when you're practicing that much. So, come on work, bring me back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, still dark horns. We're going to play with a medium shallow piece. This is a wonderful piece, GR64MS, medium shallow. And uh, I think we'll, um, hmm. oh, you know what, we'll just stick with that same song, really give you a hint of diversity with uh, just the mouthpiece. Going back to the Bach Mount Vernon from 58. Nice horn. And uh, I go round and round. I, sometimes you can almost psych yourself out with intonation. But the short lead pipe, some people feel they have bad intonation. But I played that recently with the soundtrack here and was really trying to listen very closely. The soundtrack was in uh, key of A and it was a little below the staff. So you're dealing with the uh, D sharp and then the D. And uh, then it went to, uh, where did it go to? Uh, a flat, so you're still dealing with the open C and then the D flat and the E flat. Very interesting. I, 
I'm convinced you pull that out about a quarter of an inch extra and um, the intonation, I believe, is, is quite all right. Okay, we're going to use that same medium shallow mouthpiece with the Fane Standard Professional. Nice horn. Very, in fact, they're all nice. I feel very privileged to have horns of uh, this quality. Okay, back with the P. Moriot, and they achieved their uh, darkness, again, by the titanium copper bell, not by the larger bell, not by the thicker metal, just by the uh, type of metal they're using. Lastly, we will hit the Edwards Gen 2 again with the GR Medium Shallow Mouthpiece. This is probably the heaviest of the horns. Got a long lead pipe, feeds all the way down to the tuning slide, and actually uh, fits inside it like a reversed lead pipe. The heaviest horn, the biggest bell, and I think the brightest of the four. Not that it's bright, but it's certainly not as dark as could be. So much goes into horn, horn making, different type bells, what all the lead pipe is uh, consisting of. Wonderful horns, though, all four of them. I don't think you'd call any of them bright. And uh, do hope you've enjoyed this. We appreciate the thumbs up. Love to have subscribers. We're almost to 4,800 subscribers. We passed 2 million views on YouTube uh, some months back, which was a nice milestone. Always nice to spend time with you folks. Do take care of yourself and someone near you.